Hello everyone, this is Mike with BTR Budget Tech Reviews here, and today is the first part review of the Ematic 7-inch tablet, quad-core, and uh, I bought this tablet a couple weeks back, maybe about a week and a half back, and I've played around with it enough to finally want to get a review video on it. I've kind of been busy with school and work lately, so... Uh, I've been kind of swamped with all that, so sorry for the wait, guys. If you if people that are subscribed to my videos, uh, so this is the part one, one re video, and it starts now. All right. I want to start off by uh, physical features as you can see here the back is red and it's a smooth uh, soft back cover here it, a non-removable battery uh, in the back is the speaker grill up top here is uh, the mini HDMI port right here you have a micro SD card slot which can hold up to 32 gigabytes uh, on the top you'll see you'll notice it has two buttons right here One's a power button and the other is a back button. So you, this back button, aside from the on-screen buttons, can actually be used as a back button. So, And up top here, as you can see, is your micro USB charging port and with your 35 millimeter headphone jack. Now, the front of the tablet, as you can see, uh, does have a camera, front-facing front, front VGA camera. So, uh, not a bad camera to, to the imagination. It's better than some 0.3 megapixel cameras that I've worked with in the past. And 7 inch display, which um, is a decent size for a tablet. I want to say it's pretty much the sweet so spot for me because anything more than uh, 8 inches is kind of too big for me. So here we go. Back to the tablet here, guys. Uh, let's get started with the internal specs. Here's the lock screen, as you can see here. Uh, just like um, um, any uh, stock Google uh, tablet. You can uh, add widgets to the lock screen like as so, and a lot of them are able, you're able to access the camera from here. So from the lock screen, I can access the camera. I'll do that right now so you guys can get a good look. And as you can see, there I am. And um, this tablet's actually supposed to be facing down, from what I from what I know, um, because some apps run with the buttons being on the bottom. So. I'm going to go with that for now, so let me uh, go back on that, and let me just go to the home screen there. Uh, internal spec wise, uh, as said, this uh, tablet has a quad core processor. It's uh, on the box when you get it, it's advertised as 1.5 gigahertz uh, quad core processor on it. But uh, if you guys run any benchmark tests uh, from N N22 or uh, Quadrant standard, you'll notice in the uh, spec specification department of those apps that this tablet is actually underclocked at 1.2 gigahertz. So it's not using the max po uh, GPU power that this uh, tablet can can has the power for. I mean, so it, like like I said, it's underclocked. If you guys are familiar with rooting tablets and so forth, uh, that would actually probably fix the problem. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, it run. It's running Android uh, 4.2 Jelly Bean out of the box. So let me show you guys from there. As you can see, there pretty snappy tablet. And let's see if we can get a shot of that. There you go. Android 4.2.2 right there out of the box. Kernel 3.3.0. And it's got the build number, etc. That's uh, this is a a generic tablet, guys. I bought it at Walmart for 69.99 off the Walmart site to store website. So. Uh, really good price for the tablet uh, for a quad core it's got also one gigabyte of RAM so of course uh, in some apps and maybe some games you're gonna see a little bit of stuttering but nothing that's gonna bother you too much uh, and hopefully you know it's workable for for a lot of people because like I said for the price point $69.99 for a tablet that has a quad core uh, processor it's pretty much unbeatable for the price I I mean, I think you could even compare this to the Nexus 7 minus the the high uh, the high quality display, which which I'll get to. the The display isn't uh, that crisp uh, from the looks of it, but uh, you uh, it's not as bad as other budget tablets that I've worked with. Uh, as you can see there, if I lean it back just a little bit, it starts to dim. So, so when you're watching movies 
or playing games, you're going to have to have to have it set up a certain way for you guys. Uh, this uh, tablet comes with 8 gigabytes of internal memory out of the box. So keep in mind that, you know, Android takes up a lot of the space, about 3 gigs. So you're going to get about 4.9 gigabytes of space out of the out of the box of internal memory. So if you guys don't have a micro SD card, uh, it would be wise to invest that way if you like uh, having music or videos, movies on your tablet that you like to download or just watch in general. It would be great to go back and forth from that. So uh, just one of those things, you know. Uh, let's see what else. This also has a G sensor, I'm, and I guess that a G sensor ha has to do with gaming, from what I remember, or something like that. But uh, don't uh, try to correct me if I'm wrong on that. My apologies on that. You know, I'm just trying to review this as best as I can here. So, out of the box, though, uh, let's go to the, to the app drawer, guys, because I want to show you what we got for apps. Uh, it's got a 4K player, which is mostly a, a movie player. Uh, I haven't really used it because I use uh, the gallery gallery movie player to play movies and so forth. Basically, it's got a bunch of stock uh, widgets, not not or stock stock Android apps and widgets, mostly purely Google. Comes with a Kingsoft Office down here, so if you guys uh, work with uh, Office documents and so forth, it's compatible with that. It's got a high quality MP3 recorder. Uh, most of your basic uh, Google stuff, Google Search, Google Settings, Google Plus. Uh, it's got Evernote, and you got to you get the email app, so you can sync other emails to it. Calendar, calculator. It's got Bam up there. Second page has um, Play Music, Play Store, uh, Pogo Plug, which I haven't messed with, and just basically Play Music and TVs. Pretty simple stuff. So, I mean, basic things that you normally get. Um, not a lot of bloatware. Pretty much no bloatware actually, out of the box. So, so for someone that just wants a, a pure Android stock experience, this is it. Now let's go to the bottom here really quick. I want to show you guys the the on-screen capacitive, but oh, not capacitive, but just on-screen buttons in general. And you, as you can see here, it's got the home button, the back button right here. There, and I failed to mention this at the beginning, but on the side of the tablet, there are no physical volume rocker keys. So if you want to change the volume, you have to do it on screen. So so as seen here, if I want to change the volume, I got to click that and I got to move the volume from there. So click that and I'll move the volume up or down, uh, seeing how I see fit. So uh, right here is a screenshot button. So if I click that, it's going to take a screenshot. And for those who like to take screenshots and op upload them to Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that, Here's your recent apps, and as you can see there, I just have the settings and the camera app, and of course you can just swipe to go back. And of course another volume button, or volume up and volume down. Basically this is the volume down button, and let me see if I can get that volume down and volume up. So just real quick uh, before I end this video, because I don't want it to hit uh, too much or too fast, let's see, I'm going to start Google Chrome here, and I'm actually on a website that... I was trying to download a, a third-party app and it didn't work out. So, so let's get that going, and we can actually view the screenshot since I took it. And let's do that. As you can see, the fluidity of the tablet's not too bad. And here's the screenshot. Pinch to zoom it seems to be pretty responsive. A little delayed at times, but nothing uh, that would bother you. And of course, you can go, you can go over here and stuff like that. And these are some screenshots that I've already taken. Flappy Bird screenshots. So. So let's go back home and let's go back to the browser as you can see that. And I'm going to go to uh, phonearena.com which is um, pretty much um, a website that has a lot of uh, you know fancy HTML and a, lo a lot of content basically. It's a good website where you can uh, uh, look up phones, tablets, anything uh, technology wise and it, it's going to it's basically a test that I do every time I use a tablet or phone on here because you can as you can see here it's got so much content so um, and as you can see there on screen it's gonna be a little less legible for some people me I have horrible eyesight so I'm gonna have to pinch to zoom just to see uh, certain letterings on here but but as you can see here they're talking about uh, the the Motorola G and I actually uh, uh, did a review on that phone, so if you guys aren't familiar with my channel, go check it out. The Moto G uh, by Boost Mobile. And I have uh, three review videos on that phone. So uh, there is a, 
update to fix the troublesome bugs apparently so because I, I did an update on it a while back and I've noticed that there that the update actually got it made it more laggy so but yeah anyways back to this as you can see here the the transitions are pretty quick and fluid as you can see there's just a bit of of, of white scale there that you see from from the transitions but but as you can see here let me see if I can get get this to go back there you go as you can see here it's uh, really it's really fluid in the transitions and and finger gestures wise I have no issues moving it up and down let's move it all the way down and like I said pinch to zoom works really good so uh, keep an eye out guys for the second review video I'm gonna run uh, some quadrant standard scores for you I want to show you guys some gaming and maybe a little bit of the camera app and just uh, app usage usage in general so thank you guys for watching and as always please please subscribe